My name is Dr. Suchinder Nijja. I'm a consultant cardiologist and I work at Chelsea and Westminster NHS Foundation Trust and also Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust. I'm going to talk about atrial fibrillation, what the condition is, what causes it, what it means for you, the different tests that we do and how we can treat it. Atrial fibrillation is a heart condition in which the pulse becomes irregular. The heart is normally governed by electrical signals and in atrial fibrillation or AF as it's commonly known, the signals become jumbled and disorganised. This means the pulse can jump around or become very irregular. Sometimes the pulse can be fast and on other occasions the pulse can be slow. In atrial fibrillation, because the electrical signals are jumbled, the heart is less efficient than it is normally. This means its pumping is slightly less good and that can cause many of its symptoms. If you, this is very important because the heart supplies blood to the whole body and when it is less efficient, it can make you feel less well. The common symptoms in patients who have atrial fibrillation can include having palpitations. This means being aware of your heartbeat and sometimes it can feel like your heart is jumping out of your chest. On other occasions, some people feel dizzy or have light-headed spells. When the pulse is particularly fast, this can feel unpleasant and there may be pain in the chest which feels like someone is standing on you. On other occasions, it can make you breathless and you might be able to walk less far than you could before. Stairs may become a difficulty and if the heart becomes weakened, then it's also possible for there to be swelling. Perhaps there may be swelling of the ankles and fluid can accumulate in the body. In some people, atrial fibrillation can be completely silent and you may have no symptoms at all and in fact can be found incidentally for when a, a medical test was performed for other reasons or you are having a routine checkup. Treatment of that atrial fibrillation is just as important as if you have symptoms. Atrial fibrillation can be diagnosed by checking the pulse and your doctor or another medical practitioner can check the pulse and see if it is irregular. This can help make the diagnosis but is not the definitive way. Atrial fibrillation can also come and go, so checking the pulse just once will not help make the diagnosis and other tests will be required. What causes atrial fibrillation? Well, there are many different causes and we will have to do tests to find out the particular cause in you. The most common cause of atrial fibrillation is hypertension or high blood pressure. And particularly if you've had high blood pressure for some time, the greater the risk of developing atrial fibrillation. Another very common cause of atrial fibrillation is an excess intake of alcohol, and this is very common. Another very important cause of atrial fibrillation, which doctors will be very concerned about excluding, are physical problems with the heart muscle or the heart valves. And in people who have had heart attacks or had heart valve problems, a scan will be required to look to see how the heart shape is and how the heart is functioning. Other causes of atrial fibrillation include having an overactive thyroid or other medical conditions including clots that have gone to the lungs or infections. Why is atrial fibrillation important and what does it mean for you? The reason it is important over and above the symptoms it can cause is that it increases the risk of stroke. The risk of stroke will be individual to you and your doctor will work together to work out what your risk is based on risk factors that you may have. For example, your age, your gender, and whether you have high blood pressure or weakness of the heart muscle. The risk of stroke is increased in atrial fibrillation because the blood pumps less well inside the heart, allowing small clots to develop. These clots can go to the brain and cause a small part of the brain to stop working. This is called a stroke. Stroke can affect people in different ways, but may affect your arms, your legs, or even your speech. In some situations, stroke can be devastating and you can be left with a permanent disability. In others, stroke can improve very rapidly and in some people, there can be a return to normality or near normality within 24 hours. All of these things are very important and will have a big impact on your life. Therefore, reducing the risk of stroke is the most important factor in the management and treatment of atrial fibrillation. How do we make a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation? Well, the first is for your doctor to listen to the history and your story of symptoms. The second would be to feel your pulse to see if it is irregular. And the third would be to perform a, an examination to listen to the heart sounds. 
Because atrial fibrillation can come and go, a single examination may not be able to detect it and other tests are very important. The most important test is called an ECG or electrocardiograph. This is a test where multiple leads are put onto the chest, arms and legs and a tracing of the heart rhythm is made. This can help a di doctor diagnose atrial fibrillation or other heart rhythm disorders. Because a single ECG may not show atrial fibrillation, your doctor may ask you to wear what's known as a halter monitor. This is like a portable ECG that you wear under your clothes and go about your normal everyday business and a permanent ECG is recorded throughout the day. In some people it may be appropriate to use a monitoring device which is a smaller device that you wear around your neck and it has a button which allows you to press it at the times that you feel your symptoms and this can allow a very focused assessment of the heart rhythm 